Intlanextia intonatio, que sus soles sean brillantes, may your sun, your sun as in the suns, be always brilliant. Uh, thank you, Carnal Victor, Victor Landa. Uh, and thank you to um, TEDx San Antonio for inviting me. This is the first time I'm here, and I, I like that TEDx. I like that X there. Basically, a Chicano bean. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> um, Chicano, in a very general sense, being uh, Mexican in the United States as opposed to being a Mexican in Mexico, right? Um, even though this was Mexico before <laughs> Texas and all the Southwest. Um, but I use uh, the word Chicano and I write it with an X a lot of times so that uh, people can ask me, what is that, Chicano, Chicano? No, it's Chicano, and, and that way I have to explain to them what the origin of the word Chicano and where it, where it comes from. Um, and, and that's very important. The title of my, uh, my talk, as you can see, is kind of a long title. He goes, that's going to take up the whole 18 minutes just with your title one. I said, uh, Chicanismo and Tejano Music, Local Music, Global Identity and Vision. And... Um, in order to understand Tejano music, you have to understand who we are as Chicanos, as Mexicans in the United States, our history, our culture. This is, uh, we're still, uh, by the way, in Generation X, Chicano, <laughs> or, or, or Generation Mex, as some people have said, or some of the people now say Generation Text Mex. Oh. <laughs> Whatever. We're all of that. Um, and, um, you know, somos mexicanos, chicanos, mexicanos, Mexicans. A lot of people don't even know where the word Mexican comes from. It comes from the Mexica, the Mexica Tenochca Indians, better known as the Aztecs. Did you all know that? No? Mexican? So there's a progression of uh, Mexica, Mexicano, Chicano, okay? And um, it's very important, you know, because some of, of our own children, you know, Chicanitos and Chicanitas in the schools don't even understand that they're first and foremost American Indians, that we're American Indians. <laughs> That's where the word Mexican comes from, where the word Chicano comes from. And it, it's so, so basic and so vital to who we are as a people. And in a lot of ways, through the educational system, it's been denied to us. Uh, anyway, so that's very important. Uh, and in fact, uh, the Mexica Tenochcas, the, the Aztecs, the capital city of, of their uh, Aztec empire was Mexico, Mexico, Tenochtitlan. The X, once the Espanol got here, started writing Mexico, the, the written language, the X was sort of pronounced like a CH or SH sound, depending on which linguist you read, right? Mexico, Mexica, Mexicano, Chicano. Okay. So that's a very sort of generalized linguistic historical progression from our American Indian roots, uh, the Mexica, Aztecs of who we are. Uh, and a very important phase then, obviously in 1492, Columbus and Cortes came over, right? Looking for India, coming for God, Catholicism, gold and glory. And uh, they thought they had arrived in India. And of course they arrived here in what's now the Caribbean and then came over to the uh, mainland, uh, the continents of America. And uh, they thought they had arrived in India. And that was one of their first mistakes. And they said, these red people here must be Indians. So we made it to India. Well, uh, since then and after that, uh, we, refer, we refer to ourselves as American Indians to, to differentiate ourselves from from the real Indians because they eventually did find the real India. <coughs> Nonetheless, uh, the Spaniard came and came to a war and uh, eventually won the war against the American Indians here and uh, governed here in the so-called New World for over 300 years, right? 1500 to uh, past 1800. And during these 300 years, they intermixed and married with the American Indians here to form the mestizo population, mestizo. And we as Chicanos are mestizos. We're part American Indian and part Spanish. We are this mixture, this hybrid culture, this synthesis. And this is at the, the basis of our being, uh, of who we are, this important mixture of the old world and the new world, 
right, to form the third being that's a synthesis of these two cultures and people. Um, later on, of course, this mestizo people went to war against Spain, won their independence in 1821, and took the name, interesting enough, of the capital city of the Aztec Empire, Mexico, Mexico Tenochtitlan, Mexico, became the independent nation of Mexico. And then, subsequent to that, that was in 1821, you know, Texas and the Alamo here in San Antonio. Santa Ana, the president general, came up, won the battle, lost it in San Jacinto and Goliad, gave Texas to the Texans, uh, of which, you know, Chicanos, Mexicanos fought uh, at the Alamo and here for Texas uh, independence also. And um, Texas became an independent republic from Mexico in 1836. Didn't become a state of, uh, uh, within the United States until 1845. And then, of course, in 1846, part of the whole U.S. history and manifest destiny, the expansionist period, right, from sea to shining sea, which they, they took over the American Indian's land, move into all this land, which was part of Mexico's, right, Texas, New Mexico, Arizona, Nevada, Colorado, California, parts of Oklahoma, it was all Mexico before, you know, uh, 1845. Um, Texas became a state of the Union here in the United States in 1845. In 1846, the United States went to war against Mexico, won the war two years later in 1848, and, and in effect took more than half of Mexico's land as part of this manifest destiny period. We now have then Mexicans that are living here. Of course, this was all Mexico right before uh, throughout the Southwest. Many Mexican families living here with their land, their religion, their culture, their language, and so forth. Uh, they were allowed to stay here and become citizens of the United States after the signing of the Treaty of Guadalupe Hidalgo. So now we have the beginning of the creation of the Chicano, the Mexican within the United States. So you have this linguistic historical progression that I wanted you to be aware of in terms of where the word Chicano comes from because there's a lot of misconceptions about the word and very negative attitudes about the word. Of course, it became much more popular as though it's been used for, for many, many, many years. It became more popular during the Chicano movement of the 60s and 70s, the civil rights movement, along with the women's feminist movement, the black power movement, the environmental movement, you know, the civil rights movement, that that term uh, that was, uh, you know, uh, used more so by the radical youth, you know, and part of the civil rights movement, the Chicano movement. I was part of that radical youth in the, in the early 70s when I went to the University of Texas at Austin, right out of high school here from Central Catholic in San Antonio. And for the first time, really started taking Chicano history courses and learning about who I was and my culture and my history and literature and music and eventually then got my degree in Chicano studies and then my master's in basically what was Chicano studies also here from UTSA. Uh, but this is important to know and some people think, oh, it comes, the word Chicano comes from, you know, pig and, you know, from Chico or from, no, no, no. Mechica, Mechicano, Chicano, right? It's important, like I said, this mestizo that we are as a people, this mestizaje, this mixture, this synthesis, this hybrid of people and cultures and influences, uh, that as Chicanos we are mestizos, a part, of, part American Indian and part Spanish, and as a result of this mixture, we unite all of the races in the world within our blood. From the Spaniard, we have the African black blood also from the Moors that governed there for over 700 years mixed with the white. So from the Espanol, we have the black and white mixture. And once they came over to the New World mixed with the American Indian, here we have the red and yellow mixture as a result of the Asian people who also crossed the Bering Strait, but the red people were already here. That's another sort of revisionist part that I like to speak about. So we unite within this mestizaje all of the races of the world, black, white, yellow, and red. And that's very important. And we are Mexicans and Mexicans in the United States. We have all of these influences. Uh, I want to make a quick quote. It is this mixture, this synthesis, and blending of cultures, which uh, Dr. Renato Rosaldo, one of our prominent uh, academics from California, calls transculturation, which is at the core of our being and which has allowed us to create hybrid forms of artistic and cultural expressions that transcends these borders, barriers, and boundaries, right? We're border crossers. We always have been <laughs> on a lot of different levels, okay? <laughs> Figuratively and literally. <laughs> and Tejano music 
is one of these hybrid forms of expression that encompasses the following. Uh, Dr. Américo Paredes, one of the early, very, very important uh, Chicano scholars, and he did refer to himself as Chicano also, amongst other things, um, wrote the book on the New World Corrido tradition and say that we, as Tejanos, created the New World Corrido tradition right here in Texas. Tejano just means Texan in Spanish, right? And that's why Tejano music is Tex-Mex music, if you will, okay? Texas-Mexican, the Mexicans in Texas, right? Chicano music also, this larger rubric. And Tejano music is this sort of larger rubric under which we as Chicanos, Mexicans, United States, as Tejanos, Mexicans in Texas, have created the New World Corrido tradition right here on the border as a result of this conflict and blending of the cultures between Anglos and Mexicans, right? We're border people, right? We're border culture. We synthesize all these different elements to come up with something new. So the, the corrido tradition, the ballad, the story song, we created a new form based on the Spanish romance and decima and verso tradition that they brought over. But it took on a new form here on this border. You know, 50, 60 years before the start of the Mexican Revolution, right after the U.S.-Mexico War in 1848, Juan Nepomucena Cortinas didn't like the way the Anglos treated the Mexicans. Obviously, it was a very racist war. And built up an, uh, an army and went to war against Mexico. And then they wrote a, a corrido about him in a new sort of form. And, and Dr. Américo Paredes laid out the structure of it, both in terms of literature and, and, and its musical form um, that was very specific. And then other corridos have been written. His doctoral dissertation was written on the corrido de Gregorio Cortez with his pistol in his hand. Very important work. We've also created at least two and probably more original American musical ensembles and styles of music. The first one being the conjunto, that we refer to it as, as a conjunto. Conjunto in Spanish just means ensemble or group, but in Texas, it's come to mean a specific type of musical group that uses the button accordion as its principal instrument. Now, the reason why it's an original American musical ensemble is because once the German and other European settlers um, introduced the button accordion, which is based on the harmonica, right? Button's different from the piano accordion. Here into Texas, you know, the pioneers, the settlers came in, the Mexican people that were here heard this lively polka music. The polka was sweeping the world in the mid 1800s, right? 1860s, 1870s, as the salon dance music, right? And we heard, I mean, of course, you know, very lively, and you could play the accordion with its button, you know, very relatively cheap. So we adopted the button accordion. Once we combined it with the Spanish Mexican Bajo sexto 12 string bass rhythm guitar. That was the beginning of a new original American musical ensemble. The Germans and Europeans didn't use the bajo sexto in their music, you know. And then we added the corridos singing in Spanish and, and, and indigenous Mexican rhythms uh, to, to the accordion like the wapango. And I'm going to demonstrate some of these, uh, a lot of these different influences here in just a minute. Uh, and then it evolved over the years. So by the turn of the century, 1910, 1920s, when the first recordings happened, the, uh, the original ensemble was beginning to develop and it matured in the 1960s. According to Manuel Peña, who's the foremost Tejano um, theoretician and scholar on, on Tejano music, and I agree with him. <clears throat> the second unique American original musical ensemble style of music we created was the Orquesta Tejana, which was based on the big band jazz, uh, uh, bands and, and, and music of the 20s and 30s. So Chicanos, you know, football is big in Texas. We learned how to read music in band, right? And then um, we began playing in different orchestras in our community um, and began playing jazz and, and, you know, American pop and rock music initially and then scaled it back. And we began playing a repertoire that was more traditional to conjunto music that came with the accordion, the polkas and the waltzes. Um, uh, and then uh, corridos, and then cumbias as our music evolved and took on a more international character. But they use 
horns, right? Saxophones and woodwinds and, and brass and trumpets and trombones with keyboards sometimes and bass and, and drums and so forth. So a distinctive style and band ensemble developed that we call the Orquesta Tejana. And then other hybrid bands, such as in, after the 60s into the 70s, and a an real interesting development happened that the conjunto with the accordion, which was a distinctive ensemble, the Orquesta Tejana, they had parallel develops and developments and di distinct audiences, although they crossed over always amongst the Chicano people, the Mexican people here. Uh, but the Manuel Peña says the conjunto is more ranch, working class, the orquesta after World War II developed into a more emerging Chicano middle class, and they needed a more high tone music, as he says, you know. So the orchestra fit that bill, for the more fancier type of celebrations. But the conjuntos, they had a parallel development. Then they came together, right, and during the civil rights movement, the late 70s and the 80s, and became known later on as Tejano music in general. Again, a lot of people have misconceptions about Tejano music, and they say, well, Tejano is the more progressive side. Conjunto is the more traditional side. Conjunto is Tejano music also. It's the original Tejano music and, and Tejano ensemble. The orchestra came afterwards, parallel developments. Then they merged. We have these hybrid bands that were part conjunto, part orchestra, a la Roberto Pulido y los Clásicos, that combined the accordion with two saxophones. And then, of course, in the 70s, it was the synthesizer era, right? And all the Chicano bands, a lot of them started using synthesizers. And everybody thought that, that the synthesizer was going to take the place of the accordion because they could rep replicate it electronically. And then the horns also, they could do it. But it didn't. And new bands emerged that combined saxophone with synthesizer with accordion. It was this whole melding of which we are, right? And other hybrid forms and other styles of singing, cancion, canciones rancheras, canciones románticas, corrido tradition, and also um, um, the... Um, distinctive sort of duet blending with our songs that we sing Spanish. Now, <clears throat> we, uh, we have evolved. We, as I said, we're, we're a mixture of all this. We're a, a hybrid culture, and our language and our food and our music and our literature expresses that. Like my mom was telling me the other day, no, estaba you know, because she loves basketball. This was like last year. And she was, estaba tu tía Alicia allá, estaba watchando television. Y, y los Spurs estaban perdiendo, estaba gritando. Y say, no, 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 no. And she turned off the television. <coughs> That's the way we talk. <laughs> So this little uh, squeeze box here, you know, we adopted it, began our conjunto ensembles. And I want to just demonstrate some of these international, global influences that are very much a part of our music, of our culture, of our dance, because we can't separate our music from dancing. You know, we are, we, we are dancers, and, and uh, of our culture, right, and how we've blended it to become... Um, and, and, and to produce and create something distinctive and unique. And my father uh, took me when I was nine years old. It's over? The completely over? I can't believe that was 18 minutes. I can't believe that's 18 minutes. <laughs> A little bit of Cajun Zydeco for you. Salsa, cumbia, European rhythms, Spanish, Mexican, wapangos, jazz, blues, rock, country, to come out with something distinctive, ensembles, and a unique musical style. And it is this uh, local music that we've created here and this global identity that we have that speaks to a vision of unity amongst all the races. Thank you. <laughs> 